Hey everybody, it's Steve with Sky194, and I hope you're doing well today, and I appreciate you stopping by to check out my video. And we are here at Paul Ricard with the R8 uh, Audi Evo. Look at those beautiful cars. Man, man, they look great. And um, just doing a setup for it, doing a test race, so let's get this thing started. Going double file. So I did a setup for it, and I've already done uh, one decent race with it, but actually um, you know, made some other little adjustments, and it seemed to be working better you know, in practice, so I'm going to do a, another r test race here, and if it passes the mustard, then I will put this up so you can all green light, green light. Go, go, go. video or a uh, setup for the Audi for Paul Ricard. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Dang it. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Car on the left. Three wide. All clear. Clear on the left. Car on the right. Clear on the right. See if I can catch back up to the pack here. I don't want to lose them. I love the sound of this Evo, this Audi, man, this thing sounds brutal. to get on the back of that Lamborghini. I got way more fuel than they do. 
First, the AI's at 100 and the aggression's 100, if I haven't said that already. We are halfway through, keep pushing. That's why I like to do that turn right there. Get a better drive down the straightaway, it makes a big difference. But you just gotta hit it just right. to see how it handled through there. I mean, it would go through, but I lost time, so that's no good. But again, I mean, it's not so important where I finish, but how it races. I mean, you got to be able to move around and do things and put it where you want to and all that kind of stuff. Should be two laps to go. This lap, one more. The AI is tough at 100% and everything. They're running decent. Oh man, I totally missed my apex. See, that just kills it right down through here. Kind of lost where I was. Just focusing on gaining on him so everything else. race. Yeah, give me 
so careful when you're behind somebody with all this air. the energy I could be doing an hour race of that. that that was fun I, I really think this is a good setup because you know you can really battle it out of course I was trying I was being a little impatient but I mean it's just like 10 minutes but that's what I love about the longer races you know you can just sit there and bide your time and and try to look for a good you know spot instead of having to rush or make a move when you don't really want to make a move So, let's look at that last lap. See how bad my move was when I had to go into the inside of him? I was about ready to run into him. Yeah, I just nudged him, barely nudged him. Slow walking in through that turn one. Yeah, the car feels really, you know, really good and you know, real consistent. Let's see, take a look at the setup, and of course, I'll put a link in the description. Take a look at it uh, through here from this angle and see how it looks. Of course, you gotta watch it because you're behind somebody. But it sounds flat, it's staying really flat. I like that. Let's shoot through here. He's leaning a little bit, but not real bad. Barely leaning. I 
I said, I'm sure I have more fuel than they do because I had 50 liters. But I did test it when I had 70, so I have it, it worked perfect, so. I just blew that turn. But anyway, just wanted to take a look at that. Uh, let's go to the setup. And we have 25.9 left front, 26.1 left rear, 26.9 right front, and 26.7 right rear. The tow is a negative 0 0.04 on the front, and the camber is negative 3.6 on the left front and negative 3.4 on the right front, and the caster is 15.4. On the rear, um, the tow is 0.1 with the camber at negative 3 on the left rear and negative 2.8 on the right rear and I did a lot of adjustments messing around with these and it just seemed like I added a lot more negative camber and it just didn't seem to help and if anything it made the tire wear worse so and I didn't really see any performance gain and in the slow corners you know the all those slower corners that negative can all that negative camber doesn't help so I mean it's good better maybe better for medium to fast corners but it's not going to really help all that much on the slower corners so actually you'd rather have less so i think it that it outweighs it having it like this because i tried it both the other ways uh three and five on the traction and the tc and abs of course i'll put this back up to 65 or 7. i had it at um 70 when i was practicing so you got light graining on the front, but it's always doing that. But at least it's not real bad, just light. Um, and that's running really hard. So uh, the wear, look, I mean, look at the wear. It's even front and rear. So, I, I mean, that's almost exact. I mean, I'm really happy with that. Um, that's, to me, really good wear. But, yeah, I mean, again, you know, I was really pushing hard and driving through the corners hard and scrubbing, you know. So, let's see. Any roll bar got four on the front, 61 on the brake bias. Steering ratio is turned all the way down. Now, this is where the, I played around a lot with this here. Um, the wheel rate is 185,000, or the springs, on the left front. The bump stop rate is 1,100, and the bump stop range is 1. The springs on the right, or spring on the right, is 174,000. With a bump stop rate of 1,000 and a bump stop range of 3. On the rear, the spring's 163,000 on both sides. And the bump stop rate is 700 on the left rear with a 5 bump stop range. And on the right rear, the bump stop rate is 600 with a 12 bump stop range. The anti roll bar is 1, and the preload on the diff is 60. And I did play around with a lot of these. So these have been all over the place. Stiffer, softer. Um, same thing with the shocks. And it, it's you never can get it per, you know, perfect as far as take these bumps are off. They don't look that bad, but they're just they're awful here at Paul Ricard. But it's a big improvement over what it was on the aggressive. I'm, it's, this setup's completely different than what the aggressive is. Uh, Shocks on the front are 14, 10, 30, and 26. And on the rear, they're 13, 10, 28, and 26. Arrow, I got 57 in the front and rear with a two rear wing and two and two on the brake ducts. And, of course, it's because it's cool. So, I, you know, I always keep it around 24 degrees when I do all my setups, 25 degrees in that range, and light wind. And I try to do that to keep them, you know, to keep everything uh, the same when I'm doing setups. But obviously, the brake ducts and tire pressures all need to be adjusted accordingly to whatever your track conditions are. Um, I try to keep them around 27 and a half hot. Um, you know, a little less, a little more is okay, but I try to keep them right around 27 and a half um, after they get fully up to temperature. Uh, Again, I sure hope this works good for you. I will put a link of this in the description. And again, I appreciate all the well wishes. You know, uh, hopefully get better soon, I hope. <laughs> um, 
and uh, I sure hope you hit the thumbs up I really would appreciate it. it would really help the channel and also subscribe if you haven't subscribed and uh, I sure hope you come back and visit again and y'all take care see ya